Welcome back to my channel, Happy New Year. So today, as you guys read by the title and the thumbnail, we are going to be talking about the struggles of being a Christian. And I have with me... Tanya, Happy New Year. And Tasha. Tasha. And I don't know if you guys know, but I put out this question on Instagram and I got many answers from so many people. And we're just going to be saying our own thing. So it's more like a conversation, so just join it. So like, I guess we're gonna be talking about struggles and some answers we can, like how to overcome it. So you to start off, we're all Christians. Yeah, obviously. So we're gonna be talking about the struggles of being Christian. And things that we probably faced, right? Okay, so you wanna do the first one? Yeah. Well, we both can just talk about it. The first one says, people assume all Christians are those fake ones that do so much damage. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about that? Okay. People assume that all Christians, all Christians are those fake ones. Okay, well, not everyone's fake. I just want to get that out there. There are certain, I believe, certain Christians that are very, you know, very um religious, I guess so to say, that are very strict on certain things, um, and you know, they just they kind of push the religion and what we have to do and what we have to be that are not technically in like, you know, the right sense down the generations, down to the children, and they force us to do it. Yeah. And I don't think all Christians are crazy because there are very crazy Christians, yes, that want us to do a lot of things. And you know, we might all know one, you guys, mm -hmm. right? But um, I do believe that there are also on the other hand, certain Christians that, you know, they're very cool. Then they're very like down to earth they're Christian, yes, of course, they align everything with God, but I also believe that they're also very understanding, very connectable, that you can actually open up and talk to them without them condemning you. I don't know, that's my opinion. What do you think about it? What was the it says, people assume all Christians are those fake ones that do so much damage. That's interesting, but not all Christians are the same. There are some that are very religious, and there are some that backslid, and there are some that say they're Christians but don't act like it. But the religious ones are, you can say, the Christians because they follow in the footsteps of Jesus, the way that, that he lived. But um, the non-religious, like the ones that call themselves a Christian, they're just putting on the title, and that's not what we're here to talk about. Yeah. But um, the religious ones are, you know, the ones that actually follow in the footsteps of Jesus. So yeah. But I mean, in this question, it depends on your definition of fake. Because fake, fake could be carried out in so many different things, you know? It could be someone who's like, who's a hypocrite, right? They say one thing, they like, you have to do that, blah, 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 but they don't even follow on that. Or someone who you have trusted and told them things, even though you yourself are not a Christian, and you know that they will pray for you, but they end up just telling other people your problems. There's so many different ways of fake, but I'm gonna put this out there. Christians are humans. It's not like when you become a Christian, you all of a sudden get the superpower where you're not human anymore. You're still a human. Every Christian is still a human and they will make mistakes because we all sin. We all have fallen short. But they are obviously going to be some people who are just like, they call themselves Christians, but they're like, they, they don't follow in what Jesus teaches us. So there's always going to be people like that. Um, I also want to add just one more. Yeah, yeah. Um, about the damage there's very much um some christians there are and i'm not saying all do but there are certain christians that go out there and they condemn people mm -hmm. for doing wrong things for being human right that really hurt them and make them stop coming to church make them stop believing god and instead of getting them closer to god the way we all want them to do they start going away because they're very hurt from what some people say because i've seen and I've heard so many people that stopped coming to church, that stopped believing in God, that stopped striving for God. And even former Christians, yeah. just because someone said, oh, this was wrong of you to do, or they didn't show love the way Jesus wants us to show love, mm -hmm. or they said something or did something against them that wasn't very Christian-like. The next one someone said was peer pressure. Another struggle of being a Christian is the peer pressure. For those who don't know what that means, it means just like you're getting pressurized by your peers, friends, and whoever, your acquaintances. That's what it means. So I guess that's another struggle. Right, so peer pressure is something that's very common, and especially people our age, because we're teenagers, obviously we're growing. And we have friends that are not Christians, and they, 
and they influence us not to act like Christians. Some people, well, in my opinion, I've seen this, some people influence people not to act like Christians because obviously as you're growing, you're going to want to be like the rest of the crowd. You're going to follow the crowd. You're going to act like them. So they're going to force you to do things that you're not going to want to. But I know some people that are in my school, actually, they are peer pressured into doing um, some Christians that are, some people that are Christians, sorry, um, they are pressured into doing things that they would normally not do because of their friends. For instance, like smoking or drinking or hanging out with the wrong crowds, being in gangs and stuff. Some Christians I've seen that have backslid because of their peers. So like something I would say is that's a struggle because you have to be careful who you hang out with because the people that you surround yourself with is the people that are going to influence you and basically show others who you really are so that's my thing yeah. um i think peer pressure is one of the biggest things that us christians struggle with only because there's certain things that we cannot do versus what we can do um obviously in the bible right it says like you know we can't like you know partake in certain situations like smoking drinking all of that and anything that like brings us away from god and I think a lot of people, a lot of Christians, I guess, struggle very much with that because there are friends that we have that, you know, they are very Christian, like they don't really follow what we follow. And sometimes we look and we're just like, oh, you know, they're doing this. Why can't we do it? Right. And I feel like that's a lot of reasons why a lot of people like mainly um, kids, but it could be any age. Right. Um, teenagers. Right. That kind of go into it because they're very influenced by their friends because one thing is as you grow from like you know toddlers into like you know teenagers and everything is that you start um trusting your friends more you start yeah. looking up to your friends rather than your parents and what if your parents say don't do that's what you want to do because your friends are doing so i think peer pressure is that and also there are um you know in schools sometimes there are friends that are like oh do this or you know you're a loser or do this or you know you're not cool or you can't be our friend and then that makes certain kids go and you know do whatever that their friends are doing and i really believe that you know we struggle like a lot of christians struggle with peer pressure because it's pretty much a decision that is either gonna make us or break us because at the end of the day um you know we're either gonna have to choose between doing what everyone else does or just being the one that's you know standing out yeah i feel like um in this it reminds me of like a quote or like a saying where like it's a proverb like this it says tell me who your friends are and i'll tell you who you are it's like who you hang out with is, is who you are gonna become like i feel like many people have a mindset where they're like i can bring that person to christ let me just hang out but that's great but then don't get influenced by them you have to be the one to influence them that's why it's like a really big risk with whoever you hang out even the other day like we were talking right and we were saying how so many people we even knew they had changed they are like into um drugs alcohol all of that and we we cannot judge them because maybe in a way it's not their fault it's who they hung out with and they felt pressured to do it like they didn't want to but at the point when they they're like let me just do a little and then they got hooked onto it that's that's what addiction is called and that's not what we're in right now <laughs> but so that's but peer I, pressure okay so the next question says i guess one of the hardest things is being is being a truthful representation of jesus in the sin-stricken world we're surrounded by many distractions and bad habits you want to say um yeah so this kind of ties in with what we all talked about with peer pressure um there are a lot of distractions and the thing is um the difference between peer pressure and distractions is that peer pressure is when your friends tell you and come and they're like oh um do this do that or you're not gonna be cool but the thing about distractions is that each and every single person here has a different distraction it could be a phone it could be um something that you watch it could be a toy it could be friends whatever it is even the smallest thing can be a distraction and whatever kind of like leads you away kind of has your full attention and everything it can be a distraction and the thing about this world is that this world has a lot of sins and there are different things that are not you know that are not like very you know good things godly things that we can do right or that we um that everyone does 
so it kind of like distract us distracts us from you know what god has called us to do and obviously every single person on earth has a purpose right yeah and all the distraction whatever it is for each one of us it can be very different um it can lead us sometimes away from god and away from what we were called to do for example if i was well not me if i well for example if i was called to preach and i had the distraction like i just wanted to like you know be on my phone all the time and i just wanted to be you know social media famous whatever it is that little thing even though in my head it could be nothing that little thing can lead me away from god because now instead of focusing on god all i focus is focus on is having the best picture having the best background having the best lighting everything and i can be like i have to do this or if i'm like no this pose is not good so i need to take a hundred more pictures you know and that could waste my time on that like i'll waste my time on that versus you know focusing on god and focusing on god, who god wants me to talk to next or what god wants me to do next that's true um being a christian is not very easy god never said that being a christian it's gonna be easy. He said we're gonna face trials and tribulations, but at the end, it's a great reward. But I feel like there are many bad habits and many distractions, but as long as you stay in the path that God wanted you to, and you focus on what your calling or your purpose in life is, or what you wanna do just in general, the distractions around you won't come as bad as if you weren't focusing on what God wants you to do. Um, being a Christian is, is very hard because you have a lot of people who are not Christians, you have a lot of friends who are not Christians, family that are not Christians, but um, as long as you stay a Christian, as long as you stand strong in God's word, God's faith, um, your, rep your representation is going to be fine because you have God by your side and you can do and overcome the bad habits and the obstacles that you're going to face and that you are facing now. Susanna actually has a board, she has words, and it says you weren't born to fit in. Us Christians are not born to fit in. We are here to, you know, spread the word, spread the gospel. Next question says, it's hard trying not to offend people, but still give them the message they, message they need to hear. You wanna go? Yeah, sure. I feel like um, this is like so, so relevant in my life because for those who actually know me, I'm not exactly the person who sugarcoats things. I try not to offend people because when you offend people, then they're like, I don't want to hear anything you ever have to say, ever. That's how it is. So like, there obviously is going to be some stuff that will offend people. And there's nothing you can do. Because even if you've seen the Bible, Jesus himself did offend people. But that wasn't on him. That was because the other person could not, they, they didn't accept it. Or they were too immature to understand that or hear it. And that's not your fault. But now, if you're about to go to them and be like, you're going to hell, you, and just blast at them, then that, that's definitely an issue. You can't do that either. But like, for instance, if they're doing something wrong, you can tell them in a nice way, but in the same way you're conveying the message that needs to be conveyed. So like, but I mean, people are always going to get offended. Like even us, sometimes as Christians, we get offended in some things. Like, for instance, if it's like, if you feel someone's attacking a, a random Christian, you feel like it's attacking all Christian we're all a family so that's another thing so. so i pretty much agree with everything you said um i agree with a lot of what you said one main thing that i just want to kind of like go over what you said is the fact that there are different ways to say what you want to say um we're all human that's just one thing right even though we're christians and all of that we're not you know kind of like immune to making you know mistakes we're not immune to committing sin or doing things we're not supposed to do because we are human and obviously you know no human was perfect besides jesus on earth right and i believe that you know we all make mistakes and there's certain ways that we should do it because jesus did say that we whatever we do whenever we say something to someone we should always say it with love if you go to someone and you're like you say everything with hate no one is going to listen to you and the thing about being a Christian and going and telling someone something is the fact that you're representing God. You cannot be the reason to to take that person and take away the opportunity that person has to come closer to God just because of what you said. You know, um, and that kind of leads to what I said before that certain people have been hurt by other Christians because of what they said or what they have done to them, right? And I believe that it's very hard. It's very hard 
Trust me, it's very hard to go to someone and be like, what you're doing is wrong because you don't want to offend them. You don't want them to come away from God. But the thing is, is that there is a right way to go to someone and say what you need to say and get the point across and say it with love. And the thing is, your job is to say it and make sure that the point you got across but your job is not to go and follow them around and condemn them continuously and make them do it because God gave us free choice. He doesn't want us to do anything. He wants us to come to him, but he's not going to make us and force us to do it. I feel that's very true. Um, what Hosanna said is very true, sorry. Um, we're not here to offend people, but we're here to do what God told us to do, wanted us to do, that we need to do. Um, I actually know this, one of our church members, I'm not sure I want to say names because I don't know if they're but he's actually a very good person. He, he goes and he says the word not in an offensive way, but he says it in a way where it's like, oh, this is who Jesus is, let me try to experience. But I don't think you should offend someone and say, oh, look, since you're not doing this and we're totally the opposite religion, you're going to hell, I'm going to heaven, that's how life is. I don't think you should do that. I think you should just be straightforward from what you know, listen to their side of the story and say what's the appropriate like saying. Like, I don't think you should personally offend another person, another Christian. Generally, just say how you feel, how you are, um, and what you know, and just don't, you know, say something rude and to make them feel far away from God. If they're getting close and you say something to offend them, they're going to feel far away and they're going to feel far away from you. But if you say it in a right way, um, you know, you should get it to them. When you say something to someone, one, obviously pray about and ask God to talk to you, them through you. And the second thing is you want to say something enough, even if it's a little thing, right? Even if it's one tiny thing, you want to say it enough that say they don't believe you right in the moment, but in the future when they're going through something, that little tiny seed that you planted in their life will take the root. The thing that I always tell people is that sometimes we might be the only people in someone's life That's that could lead say. and open a door Definitely. to Jesus. Um, but what we're all saying is our own opinions. We may disagree, you have the right to disagree. But this is our own opinions, and we just feel like, you know, what we're saying is what we feel. So, yeah. You know, we just want to get Now we're done with other people's questions, and I'm kind of going to questions that we would choose. And that kind of reminded me of when, um, in the Bible, Jesus, um, there was this prostitute woman. It was Mary Magdalene. She came to Jesus. Well, no, she was given to Jesus by the Pharisees. And back then, in the Old Testament, if there was a prostitute, she had to be stoned to death, right? And like, I feel like this Christians are judgmental. And I feel like um, that's so true. I was talking to even some other people about that that weren't Christians and they're like, Christians are judgmental. And I'm not disagreeing with you. Cause I feel like that's so true. And now I wanna bring up the story of what I was saying before. Um, the Pharisees, they brought Mary Magdalene. They brought her to Jesus and she had to be stoned according to the law of Moses, which was Old Testament years before. And the Pharisees and Sadducees, that's what they believed. But it says in the Bible that Jesus went to the ground and he wrote something with his finger. We don't know what that was. Then he looked at Mary Magdalene. He looked at the people. He saw the crowd and he knew these Pharisees were trying to get to him. They were trying to just, like see him to make one mistake because they couldn't find anything wrong with Jesus. No one could. And but, but Jesus said, he said, the person who has never sinned in this whole group, throw the first stone. Yes. Throw the first stone. Like, okay, you're right. Okay, great. Yeah. I'm not I'm not saying that law was never there. I'm just saying whichever one who didn't sin, throw it. And none of them could throw the stone because they all sin. Right? So I feel like nowadays, like Christians are getting judgmental. And I'm not gonna say I'm not going to say it's right because it's not. We shouldn't be judging. I sometimes find myself judging people, which is not exactly the best thing to do. Like, it's a habit that comes quickly. But Jesus himself said, don't judge people, okay? Yes, there could be a law that says this or all of this, but only with love can you reach towards someone. And if you see after that, Mary Magdalene, she she turned from her sins she became one of jesus great followers and she started helping him in his ministry which was really great